coach and author with today's ramblings, and it's what keeps the health system flowing? Now, I think just about everyone knows that the pharmaceutical companies are making heaps of money from sick people. But if you think about it, everyone in the system makes money by keeping people sick. Now, I genuinely feel sorry for doctors. Most of them go to medical school with love and compassion as their driving force. But when they come out the other end, they realize that they can't actually heal the patients at all. Now, don't get me wrong, they are genius at fixing anything that's broken. They can put things back together and they can do some absolutely brilliant stuff. Poking things in here and pulling things out here and all that sort of thing. They're fabulous at. They've got some really cool machinery that they use and they're pretty, also pretty good at diagnosing what the problem is. Although in saying that, sometimes it takes a long time and sometimes they can actually get it wrong. But overall, they're pretty good at it and they've got all the machinery and the gadgets and everything else to come up with what is wrong with you. So let's see how this cumbersome health industry works and why it's actually imperative that people stay sick. Well, it's the money flowing through the system that keeps us all locked into a disease-ridden lifestyle. Now, obviously, you've got the pharmaceutical companies. They're the kind of like, they're the ones at the top of the chain. Um, the big, huge corporate that kind of, you, you, I could almost kind of see it as this big, huge, cumbersome wheel that just continually turns, um, you know, is turning around. And underneath it, you've got all the rest of it. So you've got things like the medical device companies, the pharmacy, uh, the phys physical therapist. You've even got, and a lot of them still uh, support weight loss clinics. Um, you've got lab companies. You've got the doctors, obviously, and nurses, and the technicians. Uh, you've got the board members and those who run the hospitals, the admin staff. Um, and then, of course, you've got your local GPs and um, their, uh, their surgeries or their little um, medical centers and all of their staff as well. And, of course, you've got the insurance companies. So how I see it is that the medical industry creates fear and people feel that they can't take care of their own health and they need to get expert advice from their doctor. Alternatively, they will trot off to the pharmacy or even the supermarket and get medication. Now, it's actually quite rare for a patient in any part of the system to question. They simply do as they're told. America and New Zealand are the only two places in the whole world that are allowed to advertise pharmaceutical drugs aimed at the consumer. We do have pharmaceutical drugs advertised on our TV here, and that is true. And it has this little thing like, ask your doctor if this drug uh, is right for you. It's just insane. So the patient or the person with um, asthma or uh, diabetes or something will trot off to their doctor and they'll say, well, I saw on TV this particular drug. Is that right for me? And the doctor, because he, you know, has only got, what, seven minutes per patient says, yeah, that that's, would probably work for you. Yeah, it's a prescription and off you go. I mean, not all doctors are like that. Don't get me wrong. But most other countries have public service announcements on their TV encouraging people to eat better, you know, to be kind, to respect their elders, you know, go home and have dinner with mum and dad. Well, the way I see it, there's two alternatives that you can do. 
So the first one is that you can start on blood pressure meds by the age of 40. You can suffer from back pain and knee pain due to obesity by the age of 45. Take cholesterol meds by the age of 50. Suffer a couple of minor heart attacks and undergo yeah, a few surgeries by the age of 60 to 65. Then it's on to chemo and radiation for cancer by age 70. That's, of course, if it hasn't already got you earlier, such as breast cancer or prostate cancer, common cancers now. So by now, you've probably already been diagnosed with diabetes. And finally, uh, if you make 80, you die in the hospital. Now, I'm not saying this will happen to you. It doesn't happen to everyone. But the odds are you will be on medication for something by the time you are 50 or 60 or even earlier. Now, the other alternative is you can go through your life with only occasionally needing your doctor. You know, like if you cut yourself. Never having to be hospitalized or seriously medicated for major illnesses. You can live a long and happy life. This is barring accidents, of course. And all you have to do to make sure that you do this is keep your body moving, exercise it, and start to cut out sugar and processed foods and, dare I say it, animal products. Drink plenty of water and focus your diet around unprocessed whole plant foods, vegetables, fruits, legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds. Eating this way has so thoroughly been researched and is the only diet that is proven to not only stop but reverse heart disease and other oh so common diseases. But you see it's not taught or pushed in the medical industry because it's not a money maker. One other point I want to raise here. Pink ribbon. How many years has that been going on? Now I can only speak for New Zealand but the amount of money worldwide that that has raised in order for research into breast cancer. We are still having mastectomies, radiation, and chemotherapy. And when a new drug does come in, the women have to fight our government in order to make it affordable for them to have. Like I said, you got to keep them sick. Start today to make the shift to a whole food, plant-based way of eating. Your health will thank you for it. I'm here to help if you need to have even just a seven-day trial at this. Then you'll find a link below. That's it for today. Remember, have great food. Make it plant-based and be compassionate to all animals, including humans. I'll see you later. Bye for now.